Hello everyone, this is the Complexity Geek and today we'll be looking at the basic interface for NetLogo. This is the first video in a series to introduce programming in the NetLogo environment. Now let's just take a quick look at everything on the interface here. Uh, pretty standard window. Across the top you have your file menu, standard options for opening, opening and saving programs, editing tools, uh, different tools that we'll go into later on in the series as far as the different monitor windows that can be opened up as part of NetLogo. <clears throat> uh, the zoom allows you to zoom in for a larger programming window and you even have a tab section for interface and code to switch as well and a help menu. NetLogo has a very extensive user manual and dictionary and they even have a models library that has many pre-made model examples for coding examples that you can use for uh, code snippets to help you program your own model. Um, right below there we have the uh, three interface tabs. The main interface, this is where you will see the program run and where you build your actual interface to interact with the program. The info tab can be filled in to give uh, information on the simulation or model when you're done. Uh, the give these headers is just kind of a, a, a template. You can fill this in any way that you want to. And the probably the most important page is the code page. Right now this is empty because we don't have a co uh, program open. Um, this is where you will write your actual code that controls the simulation. <clears throat> Different play, uh, controls can be added using these controls here, the add button and this pull down. These are all the different types of controls that can be added into a NetLogo simulation. If you were to add a button, you make sure that's your highlighted, you click add and then when you come down, it will add a button which that can then be a con defined for whatever you want it to do. Uh, the same goes for slider controls and then this can be set up as a global variable and you can set your minimum and maximum to do different things in the simulation. We'll cover that when we actually get into the actual programming. The speed bar here controls the speed of the simulations run. Uh, this can vary for com from computer to computer if you have a more uh, beefy computer, um, the fr simulation will run more quickly. Um, if you have a lot of agents that it has to keep track of in your simulation, that will slow the speed of operation down, then you can increase your ticker speed using that slider. Um, you have two ways to view updates on the screen. You can either have it continuous, it's where you see all the changes as they go, or you can have it so it's on ticks. Um, the program is set up to where it act, well, one iteration of the program is called a tick. So if you only choose to view on tick, it will only update when a complete iteration of the program is done and goes back to the beginning to start again. The last button here is your settings button. This is where you control the size of your modeling area. By default, um, they give you a 32 by 32 square. If you increase this, it increases the number of patches or squares in your simulation area. You can also control whether or not the world wraps horizontally and vertically. What that means is that an agent is able to, if it, you have the wrapping turned on, the agent is able to leave the right side of the screen and come back on on the left side of the screen. If it is, If it does not wrap, you can see the borders turn into red. That means the agents are contained. They cannot go past the border. If they come up against that, they'll turn around and go back into the simulation area. They can't cross over and wrap to the other side. You can also control your patch size and the font size for any labels on the agents. And this also, you can tweak your frame rate speed of the operation. And you can also, whether or not you want to show your tick counter there as well. Um, the window can be resized. 
to make room for more controls. Um, say you were filling in a control and you wanted to be able to graph the results. You could place the graph here for the plot. You can assign it all the all the variables. We'll get into that in a later session. And then this plot, let's see, we'll edit. Okay, and it can auto scale. This is also where you would label your axes and everything. So you can have more than one plot. Let's say if you want to plot uh, results for more than one variable, you can have as many plots as you want here as well. Uh, some simulations can be so complex you can have a multitude of controls and by being able to resize the window that gives you the ability to take care of that as well. Um, that's pretty much it for a basic outlook at the interface on NetLogo. Uh, join us for the next video where we'll get into some actual adding of agents and adding and structuring some basic controls. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks and have a great day.